In this video, we're going to walk through the script on my blog for creating automatic parent-child list relationships in SharePoint, specifically uh, for a lookup field into a list that has more than 5,000 items, or, or a list that exceeds the list view threshold. So what do I mean by that? So um, here we are in my Office 365 SharePoint site, uh, and we have a list of products. And if we look at this list of products, if we go to the list settings here, we can see that there are 6,000 items in this list and our list view threshold is 5,000. We also have a list of orders and this is a specific order for a specific product. So if you see the list settings uh, for our orders list, we see we have a field called product and that is a lookup field into the products list. So this works great, having a lookup field like this uh, whenever you're wanting to create items in SharePoint and have that relationship in place. Um, however, since we're now above that list view threshold for products, when I go to create a new order, I get an error uh, where that product field is. So instead of sending a drop down list of all the products to choose from to say, hey, which product is this order for, I see this error message. And so uh, how do we, within SharePoint, create orders now that this product list is above 5,000 items? And that's what the script from our blog is going to do. It's going to help us set this up. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into our products list, and then when we're looking at a product, we're going to create an order from the display of the product because we know the ID of the product we're looking at. So we could create an order from here and automatically set that field uh, for the order. So to do this, we're going to be using the script from the blog. And here's a quick look at that script. Uh, in that script, we're referencing jQuery, because we're using jQuery for this. And we have an HTML button here that when someone clicks on it, we'll call this function called Hillbilly Create Child. And this is a fairly simple function. This whole script is fairly small. And what we're doing is we're getting the ID of the product from our query string. And then we're calling the rest query to create a new order. And we are setting that lookup field in the orders list to the ID of the product we're looking at. And after the creation of that item is successful, we are redirecting, redirecting the user to the edit form for that orders list so they can go through and fill out the rest of the information for that order. And also, uh, we've also set the source parameter um, to the display form of the product we were looking at so it will take the user back to that display form when we're all done. So this is all you know, pretty straightforward and simple as far as uh, functionality goes. So let's get this implemented so you can see it working. So here uh, in my SharePoint site, on the display form for my product list, I'm looking at a product here, I'm going to edit this display form and I'm going to add a couple of things to it. Uh, the first thing I'm going to add to this, this, this display form is going to be a, a list of orders for the specified product. So I'm going to select the orders list here from the web parts. And I only wanted to show the orders for the products I'm looking at. So to do that, I'm going to set up a connection and get filter values from products so that I can only show the orders for the specified product. So in this web part connection dialog, I need to say that I'm mapping the ID from the products list to the product field of the orders list. And that's all there is to it. It's now set up that relationship. So this uh, orders list on the page only shows orders for the product we're looking at. The last thing I want to do to this orders list is I want to edit the web part and I want to get rid of that new item link. I don't want people clicking on that new item link to create a new order. So I'm going to go to the toolbar type here and just say no toolbar and apply that, which will make that new item go away. So the next thing we need to do is add that script for my blog to this page so that we can create new orders. So I'm going to click on add web part here. I'm going to choose media and content, content editor. And what I've done is I've actually uploaded that script from my blog to my site assets library. So here, uh, looking in SharePoint Designer, you can see that in my site assets library, I have a file called order.js, which is just the script from my blog, and that's all that we have here. So if I take that content editor web part and I edit the content editor web part, 
I'm going to edit the content link for that content editor web part and I'm going to point it to that file in my site assets library that I uploaded which again is a script for my blog and that was called order.js I'm going to apply that so now we see it creates a button on the screen I'm gonna go ahead and stop editing and so now when I view a specific product let's say the product is this, this thing called paneer and I want to create an order for this product I can click on the create order button and it's actually going to create that item and take me to the edit form for that item so even though we still see this error message here it actually has set the value of that field so when you take this into production you may want to hide this field on your form or do something else with it you could even uh, display the name of the product and pass it through if you want to but for the purposes of this we haven't modified this form at all so I can fill out the rest of the information for my order put in my name and just put in some information about me and let's save it so it's going to save it and it's going to take us back to that display form and you can see it's showing us the order with the web part connection to the product so it's saved the value of that in fact if we look at my orders list now we see there's an entry in it and we see that product field was set to paneer so even though it's a lookup field to a large list we're still able to set that uh, programmatically using rest so I can do a, I can create another one so let's create another order for this product just so you can show that it's working so I can click on create order and I'll call this uh, Smith John and we can see it created another order for us so we now have two orders in there for the product paneer um, and using this method we can easily create additional orders uh, there's a couple of limitations to this solution this does uh, work for lists but not libraries because you have to upload the document to the library first uh, this also um, supposes that you only have a single lookup field and that lookup field to your large list is not a multi lookup field uh, I have some solutions to address this as well. I plan to, to show you how to get around those limitations in a future blog posts. But hopefully this gets you up and going. You don't have to use a solution with just large lists. You could use it with your regular size lists as well. And it's kind of a nice way to set up that automatic uh, parent-child list relationship so that users don't have to search uh, for that lookup value uh, in that child list. So uh, thanks for stopping by, and I hope you learned something.